In this video, we're going to start looking at multiplying and dividing complex numbers. The take-home message is when you're multiplying complex numbers, you multiply the moduli and you add the argument. When you're dividing complex numbers, you divide the moduli and subtract the argument. Now, if we just consider the following, we can write, and these are some properties of complex numbers. And whilst it seems a bit theory-heavy to introduce it now, you'll see some of the benefits later. If we write now the absolute value for modulus of Z1 and multiply it by the absolute value of the modulus of Z2, this is the same as the modulus of the product Z1, Z2. That is one of the properties of complex numbers. Uh, also, if we have now the argument of Z1, Z2, we can write this now as arg Z1 plus arg z2. Arguments act like logarithms. So when we are multiplying complex numbers, when we multiply their moduli, we end up with the absolute value of the product of those two. And then when we're multiplying, we end up adding the arguments. And as stated, later on when we come to complex transformations and loci, this will make a lot of sense. In the same way, if we have now the modulus of Z1 divided by the modulus of Z2, we can write this now as the modulus of Z1 over Z2. Also, when we have the argument of Z1 over Z2, we can write this as the argument of Z1 minus the argument of Z2. Again, those arguments are acting like logarithms. So for properties of logs, you can, in this case, apply to arguments. So take home message, when we're multiplying, multiply the moduli, add the argument. When we're dividing, divide the moduli, subtract the argument. So we're asked to express the following in the form x plus i, y. Uh, let's go for this one. I'm not going to do them all. We'll do a few. So what we've got is 3 cosine of pi by 4 plus i sine of pi by 4 multiplied by 2 cosine of pi by 12 plus i sine of pi by 12. So what we need to do is the 3 times the 2. We're going to multiply the moduli. 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. We now need to add the arguments. So what I'm going to do is write the pi by 4 as pi by 12s. So we've got 3 pi by 12 plus pi by 4, uh, sorry, pi by 12, which is going to be equal to 4 pi by 12, which we could write as pi by 3. So we've added the arguments. We've multiplied the moduli, we've added the arguments, and now we can write cosine of pi by 3 plus i sine of pi by 3. They would like this in the form x plus i, y. So we're going to have 6. The cosine of pi by 3 is 1 half. The sine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. So cosine of pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. So we could write this as 3 plus 3 root 3i. And again, I'm taking for granted that you've watched a video before this on how we've done that. Okay, let's pick another one. Let's pick this one right here. We've got root 6 cosine and minus pi by 12 plus i sine and minus pi by 12 multiplied by root 3 cosine of pi by 3 plus i sine of pi by 3. So let's first multiply root 6 and root 3. We get root 18, which of course we can write now as 3 root 2. Let's add the arguments. We've got minus pi by 12, and I'm going to write this now as 12s. So we're going to get plus 4 pi by 12. Adding them, we're going to get 3 pi by 12, which of course we can write now as pi by 4. So we've got now the product of our two moduli, so we can write this as 3 root 2 cosine of pi by 4 plus i sine of pi by 4. In the form x plus i, y, we know that this will give us 3 root 2, the cosine of pi by 4 is 1 over root 2, plus 1 over root 2, i. So we've ended up with 3 plus 3, i. It doesn't always happen that there's a, a pi by 12 in there, it's just a couple that I've picked seem to have them. Um, so there we go, nice and straightforward, fairly logical. Okay, let's just look at this scenario right here. What we've got on here, we've got cos 4 theta, and I'll write this out because it's not too easy to see. We've got cos 4 theta plus i sine 
of 4 theta, okay, and then we've got this multiplied by uh, cos theta minus i sine theta. In a couple of videos, we've looked at the odd and even nature of cosine and sine. The cosine of theta is equal to cosine of minus theta, and minus sine theta is going to be equal to the sine of minus theta. If we consider this right here, we can rewrite this now as the cosine of 4 theta plus i sine of 4 theta, and we will multiply that now by the cosine of, if this is theta and this is a minus, we can write this as negative theta plus i sine of negative theta. So this is what we've actually got here. So we multiply the moduli, 1 times 1 is just 1, so the value of r is 1, and then we add the arguments. So 4 theta plus minus theta gives us cos 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. And that would be our, our answer. Uh, you can see this in this example right here. What we're going to have now, if we write this, we've got 3 times by root 2, which is going to be 3 root 2. And on this one, we've got pi by 12. Again, pi by 12. And on this one, now, what we've got, we're going to have to rewrite this because we've got cos theta minus i sine for, uh, pi, by, pi by 3. So cos pi by 3 minus i sine of pi by 3. So this is actually cos of minus pi by 3. So what we need to do is add these, okay? So if we do that, we're going to have pi by 12 minus, and this is going to be 4 pi by 12, okay? So just think, right there, minus uh, pi by 3 is minus 4 pi by 12. So this is going to give us now minus 3 pi by 12, or minus pi by 4, okay? If I add those two together, that's what I'm going to get. Pi by 12 minus 4 pi by 12 is equal to minus 3 pi by 12, which is now minus pi by 4. So I can write this as root 3, uh, sorry, 3 root 2, cosine of minus pi by 4 plus i sine of minus pi by 4. So what we can have, we're going to have 3 root 2, the cosine of minus pi by 4 is 1 over root 2, the sine of minus pi by 4 is minus 1 over root 2 i. So you can see from this, the root 2 is cancelling out and we'll get 3 minus 3 i. And that is in the form x plus i y. So fairly logical, just don't get caught out on that one. Um, Let's do some division. So we are six species in the form x plus i, y. When we're dividing, we divide the moduli and subtract the argument. So let's do this one. Root 2 divided by half is 2 root 2. On this one, what we're going to do, we're going to convert that pi by 2 into 2 pi by 4 and subtract. We're subtracting the arguments minus pi by 4, which is going to give us now pi by 4. 2 pi by 4 minus pi by 4 is pi by 4. So we end up with cos of pi by 4 plus i sine of pi by 4. So we can now write this as 2 root 2. Cosine of pi by 4 is 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2 i. So that gives us 2 plus 2 i. So nice and straightforward, fairly logical. Um, let's do this one. I'm going to rewrite this one, and we're going to write this now as cosine of minus 2 theta plus i sine of minus 2 theta. As we looked at before, the odd and even nature of these means I can rewrite it in this form. Then we've got cos of 3 theta plus i sine of 3 theta. When we are dividing, we divide the moduli. 1 over 1 is just going to give me 1 and subtract the argument. So we end up now with cos, and we have minus 2 theta minus 3 theta is minus 5 theta, plus i sine of minus 5 theta. And don't be surprised if you see that written now as cos 5 theta minus i sine 5 theta. So that's the form that we want it in. That's our answer. But don't be surprised if you see it in this manner. And again, if we went and had a go at this one, we might as well do this one while we're here. We divide the moduli, so we get 3 over 4. And now we're going to subtract the argument. So if I put that into 6s, I'm going to have 2 pi by 6. 
So we're subtracting from that minus 5 pi by 6. We're going to get minus 3 pi by 6, which of course is minus pi by 2. That right there is going to be our argument. So we can write 3 fourths or 3 quarters cosine of minus pi by 2 plus i sine of minus pi by 2. The cosine of minus pi by 2 is going to give us 0. So we can write 3 over 4, 0. And then we're going to have now the sine of minus pi by 2 is minus 1. So we end up with minus i. And we end up now with minus 3 over 4 i. So there we go. We've gone through those fairly quickly as I wanted to get a fair few done. Take home message when you're multiplying, multiply the moduli, add the arguments. When you're dividing, divide the moduli, subtract the arguments. And those properties that we looked at before, whilst not hugely necessary to understand what we've done when we go on, they will be fairly, um, I wouldn't say essential, but certainly helpful.